Hey, welcome to Marathon Online. Today's topic is about properties and problems in classical probability. This is a Bitcoin, all right? So you have seen this Bitcoin in stock market talks or articles in Economics Times. Anyways, if you toss this coin, let's say, what is the probability that you'll get a head and a tail? Let's study that part. Okay, when you toss a coin, a fair coin, let's say this side is going to be a head and the other side is going to be tail. When you toss it, there are two options, right? You get a head or you get a tail. Each has one, one option. Okay, so the sample space is going to be head or a tail. Anyone can have, okay? So if I ask you, what is the probability of a head? So favorable outcome probability is just one. Total outcome for this is two. So that is one by two. Probability of a tail is also one by two. All right. So what we understand from here is only one favorable outcome exists. One favorable outcome. Out of all, only one favorable outcome exists. And that is what we call it simple events. So what are simple events? Simple event or elementary event. Any event which has only one outcome with one outcome is called simple event. All right. Nice. But did you see one more thing? Probability of head plus probability of a tail is equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 in this particular event and that's equal to 1. So this tells us sum of all elementary event. Sum of all elementary event is going to be equal to 1. We can also say sum of total probability of an elementary event is all sum of total probability of all elementary events is going to be equal to 1. So this is our conclusion from this thing. That is property number 1. Sum of all elementary events is equal to 1. What is elementary event? An event with only one, one out. Take this example for now. There are three balls. Red, green and blue. Imagine you take I ask you what is the probability of the blue ball all right so i also ask you what is the probability of a red ball or i'll ask you probability of a green ball all right anything you know there are totally three options so probability of there are only three options now probability of red blue and green so probability of blue is one out of three probability of red is one out of three probability of green is one out of three so this is another example of elementary events you can see the outcome of each one of those events is nothing but one every one of them is one so probability is one probability is one by three the event has only one favorable outcome so probability is one by three in this case sorry so now what we understand is this very simple let's add in this event of taking if we add all the probability probability of b plus probability of r plus probability of G. This is the total possibilities of the experiment and of drawing balls. So that is 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. How much is that? That is 3 by 3 for the experiment and that is equal to 1. So we clearly understand that sum of all the probabilities of elementary event of an experiment, elementary event of an experiment is equal to 1. Let's learn some interesting thing about this property. Okay, complementary event. What is a complementary event? What is compl complement? Let's say an event. An event is a complementary event means not a. That is everything that is not a. That is denoted by a to the power something, or it can be denoted as a complement. All right. So what is complement of an event? If event a occurs, let's say total possibility is the sample space. S is the total sample space of the experiment then a complement is nothing but sample space minus a that is what complement of a looks like let's take this example red green blue so if i ask you what is complement probability of complement of b right b complement which means everything that is not red uh, blue blue complement if i ask you red is not blue green is not blue so there are two possibilities totally there are three possibilities so two by three is going to be b complement so p r r complement let's say red complement if you take red complement you can see red is only this this is only red there are two other possibilities that is blue and green so there is two possibilities and totally again there are three possibilities two by three so this is what complement looks like which is not r or which is not blue which is not green these are all complements similarly we can say the complement of this is going to be two by three there's two comprises of red red and blue and this three comprises of red blue and green so that is also two by three the complement of green let's take one more example to understand complements and compound events if a box contains three blue balls two white balls four red balls if a random ball is withdrawn then probability of property of blue 
white and green. So let's understand this problem in a much simpler way. The sample space, let's say, is three blue balls and two white balls and four red balls, right? This is the probability. This is the sample space. These are all the possibilities. Now let's understand the probability we are asking for. Probability of blue. Probability of blue is going to be there are only three favorable outcomes, which means there are only three out of three plus two plus four. What is three plus two plus four? That is totally nine out. So totally nine. 3 by 9 so that is going to be 1 by 3 1 by 3 now please look here even though this looks like 1 by 3 which means there's only one outcome and there are totally three outcomes which is not true this is still has three outcomes so this is not a simple event even though it shows one here it's not simple event it is not simple event it's not because there are three outcomes it is called compound event there are more than one possible outcome so that is compound event all right it's called compound event what is compound event anything that has more than one possible outcome is called compound event in this question let's understand what is the complement of event b probability of b what is complement you can see probability of b complement or blue ball complement is this there are three blue balls so complement is going to be everything that is not blue so that is going to be this so that is two plus four that is six so there are totally six events and the total events are nine totally favorable outcome is six and the total number of sample space events are nine so that is two by three. So that is b complement similarly white is very easy to understand what is white how many whites are two whites are there totally nine balls so it's two by nine red there are four reds and totally there are nine outcomes so it's four by nine and also some of all the probabilities if you check this is 3 by 9 if you add all of them you will see that it is 3 by 9 plus 2 by 9 plus 4 by 9 which is equal to 9 by 9 is 1 why did this all compound events also add up to 1 why because it's of a simple reason that we'll learn in the later part. These are all mutually exclusive events. They are not dependent on each other. They are all mutually exclusive. So when you add all the mutually exclusive events of a particular of a particular experiment, that will add up to one. So that is our understanding from this whole thing. Let's look into this problem. In the in the empirical experiment and scientific experiment, where total number of probability was equal to total number of experimental outcomes, experimental trials so we can call the trial by total number of trials favorable trials to total number of trials there was a probability in an experimental probability or empirical probability or statistical probability what do you call it? but i said there's a disadvantage the disadvantage was you cannot have any experiment with infinite number of possibilities because they you cannot count infinite trials in an experimental probability so in that case classical probability was better that is what i said how is it better? Let's understand. So this is a musical chair. It's a party uh, game or it's a fun game where somebody plays a music for some time and then they stop it in between and everybody has to capture one chair. And with time, they'll remove one by one chairs and people with remaining people have to fight for those chairs before the music stops. They have to exactly at the music stop. They have to sit in a chair, occupy one chair at least. So that is how the musical chair works. Now, in the musical chair event, a girl is being instructed to stop the music exactly at two minutes okay so she is being instructed not to stop it at exactly two minutes any time in between two minutes maximum time she can take to stop maximum time she can take to stop the music is two minutes she can stop at one minute one and a half minute two minutes or you know let any time which is less than two minutes she has to stop the music she cannot take more than two minutes to stop the music okay so my question is what is the probability okay what is the probability that she stopped the music at half a minute within half a minute now this is an interesting scenario because let's understand okay this is let's say zero minute and let's say this is two minute so she can stop anywhere in between she can stop anywhere in between the music right but it happened that this is one and this is half right it happened that she's gonna stop anywhere in between half a minute she's gonna stop anywhere in between half a minute at the time so this is the total thing length she's gonna cover okay so totally she could have covered all this two minutes of length okay but no she has to stop only within half a minute all right so now you understand she can stop anywhere and there are infinitely many possibilities here infinite possibilities okay there are infinite possibilities for her to stop in between and there are totally infinite possibility of uh, time where she could have stopped anywhere in between zero and two so the, we are dealing with total infinity and even the favorable event at infinity number of counts so here we cannot work with experimental probability so here the understanding is let's say 
this is the length we take you know this length to the total length is going to be the probability of the music so if she stops at half a minute probability of half a minute is going to be length of that half a minute let's say that is half minutes divided by total length of the minute that is two minutes and that's going to be one by four and that is our probability now you have an interesting question to ask sir in this question we have one by four but we should not look at this we should see how what is the probable favorable outcome that is half so i know the event can be two three one one means it is simple event more than one means it is called a compound event what is this event called when it is only half which is not which is not the count how can something half be a count it's a good question to answer this question is it is a compound event why is it compound event because just like i mentioned just now just like i mentioned now there are infinitely many possible counts we cannot count them so we just take the length instead of counting each event there okay each outcome we don't count sorry we don't count each outcome we count the total length of that event to get a probability all right so it is a component event. there are infinitely many outcomes happening in this particular length itself so it's a compound event with infinite counts all right so that is how you find the probability of a musical chair equal a problem let's look at this problem this also is a very similar problem we'd like to give an understanding of how infinity as a count can be used to find probability as well so this is classical probability here now what happened is let's say there is a flight okay there is a plane there's a plane okay and it's coming and flying into this park and there's a lake over here. Now, the plane went missing over this particular lake, just like the Malaysian Airlines or something. Now, my question is, what is the probability that the plane landed on this particular lake? Probability that the plane landed on the lake. Now, how will you count this probability? There are infinite possibilities because each unit can be, we can divide this whole area into infinite possibility. Infinite, like you can get, take it to nanometer that itself is like, you can understand 10 to the power 9. So you can take it as small as possible right you can take it as small as possible this whole thing and at that scale you can further divide it to infinite number of possibilities so in that case how will you find the probability of this plane falling into this particular lake there is a lake here and this is all park greenery and everything so you can understand the lake covers this much area so we are going to do is very simple we are going to divide the area total area with the area of the lake that way we get a probability estimation of what it will be covering all right so this is two kilometers so the area is a square the lake area is a square all right so the lake is a square and that is two into two kilometers that is four kilometers square that is the area of the lake the area of the park the total area of the park total area of the park which means the total everything there is so that is 10 into 10 10 into 5 okay total area of the park 10 into 5 which is 50 kilometers square okay so if the plane fell here we are going to take that this area to the total area is going to probability of the plane falling there all right so probability of let's say this event e of plane falling on the lake is lakes area divided by total area because it is infinite possibilities we are going to divide with area here. that is 4 by 50 that is 2 by 25 so 2 by 25 is the probability of the plane falling in the lake when considering the whole park did you see there are infinite possibilities of counting you cannot count each and every points on this particular area right but we did count and found the probability of the plane falling in the lake by using the area Similarly, volume. You can think about volume and then you can get the volume while a question as well. Thank you.